Great. So our speaker today is uh, Tamil um, Arasan, and he will talk about a paper uh, written by uh, Jeffrey Hilton, the recent one, the forward forward algorithm, uh, some pre preliminary investigation. So go ahead, Tamil. Yeah. Hello, everyone. So as uh, Professor mentioned, right, uh, the paper that I'm going to speak about, right, it's going to be uh, about the forward-forward algorithm that uh, Neuro IPS Jeffrey Hinton had uh, given some insights on uh, how this idea has got developed <clears throat> and what are the uh, insights uh, so far uh, occurred in using and toy problems. So, in this presentation, uh, I have outlined the paper, right, in somewhat in condensed form. Uh, so uh, what was wrong with the uh, back propagation, why he had moved on to the forward-forward algorithm. Then I uh, started explaining how, we'll be explaining how forward-forward uh, algorithm is implemented. Then I was fascinated by the idea of uh, how he relates Boltzmann machines and the relationship to that. Uh, I have took uh, one single experiment of MNIST uh, supervised learning uh, to explain the idea in detail. So uh, over in this paper, right, uh, the idea of forward-forward algorithm came from the realization that uh, uh, back propagation, the most common algorithm for training any neural networks, so uh, sorry, training neural networks, uh, uh, whereas back propagation requires perfect knowledge of the computation performed in the forward pause to compute the correct derivatives. Uh, for example, if we have a black box is inserted into the forward pause, it becomes difficult to perform that uh, back propagation unless uh, we have a differentiable model of the uh, black box that is learned. So to overcome these limitations, uh, Hinton uh, developed the forward-forward algorithm, which does not require the perfect knowledge of the about the forward-forward computation, and can, it can learn while processing sequential data through a neural network without uh, storing the neural activities, uh, that is uh, uh, without propagating the error derivatives, uh, it, it was able to learn the process. And uh, the author uh, had mentioned that uh, they had tested it on several toy problems and found that it was uh, in comparable speed with the back propagation. But he also mentioned that it doesn't, uh, doesn't generalize as well. However, uh, he noted that the forward-forward algorithm has potential as a model of learning in the cortex uh, uh, and as a way of making a, a use of very low power analog hardware without uh, resorting to uh, reinforcement learning. And uh, in this case, right, when I mentioned reinforcement learning, I'm also new to that arena. Uh, I don't have that much of uh, understanding in uh, regarding reinforcement learning. So. So in general, right, uh, overall, uh, the idea of forward-forward uh, algorithm came from the recognizing that the limitations of track propagation and developing a new algorithm. So uh, how to overcome those limitations uh, and uh, those ideas, right? Uh, so back propagation, right, uh, in general, uh, is not biologically plausible because despite uh, the success of back propagation in uh, deep learning right there is no uh, convincing evidence that uh, the brain implements um, back propagation or explicitly propagates the error derivatives uh, so this uh, limits us with the applicability of back propagation as a model of how brain learns so and coming back to other thing right uh, back propagation is limited by the need for perfect knowledge of the forward computation. For example, back propagation uh, requires perfect knowledge of the forward computation in order to compute the correct derivatives. Uh, here, I, uh, what does it mean is that if we uh, insert a black box into the forward box, the back propagation cannot uh, be used unless a differential model of the black box is learned. So, but, uh, Tamil, what's wrong with the non-perfect knowledge of the derivatives? Let's say you're back propagating, but you don't have a perfect knowledge of the derivative, but have uh, a derivative with some uh, uncertainty error. What's wrong with that? Uh, can you repeat it, Professor? Sorry. Yeah. So you said that for the back propagation, you have a uh, to have a perfect knowledge of the forward past. But I'm oh, yeah. saying, what's wrong if your uh, knowledge is not perfect but has some error in it? So oh, you, oh, you know derivatives 
uh, but, mm -hmm. but you don't know exactly what they're like with some uncertainty. What's wrong with that? Okay. Uh, so, uh, for example, right. Uh, um, okay. The top down connections in any visual system, right, which are responsible for processing information from higher brain areas to lower ones. Uh, do not follow the pattern as uh, bottom up connections, which carry uh, they carry sensory input, right? Instead of top down connections from loops that go through several uh, layers in both areas, uh, arriving where they started. So this is inconsistent with the back propagation algorithms. So uh, based on the error between the predicted output and the actual output, right? Uh, it is there is. Uh, we lag with uh, strong evidence uh, that brain uses this kind of, uh, as I mentioned in the visual system. So uh, through time, right, uh, which is uh, we uh, use time to learn. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm having connection issues. I cannot hear you well. Can somebody else confirm that they, they can hear Tamil well? I can hear more or less good. Yeah, I'm fine. I can hear very well. Okay. That must be my connection. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, all right, uh, back proportion through time, right, uh, which is used to learn sequences is also implausible, right, uh, because brain needs to process sensory in input continuously without taking frequent breaks as uh, in back, uh, back propagation, right. So, it needs a learning procedure that cannot learn on the fly without stopping to perform back propagation. So, uh, I see that uh, the uh, pipeline may provide top-down information that influences the earlier stages, but uh, our brain needs to perform inference and learn it in the real time without stopping to perform uh, back propagation. So uh, that's the reason I mentioned it. So, so coming can back, I, to uh, the... can I can I just stop you and and ask you one yeah. quick question? Yeah. Uh, so you said so you said that this algorithm solves the problem when you forward propagate through a black box, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so is the problem solved? Uh, in, uh, for example, when we don't know the analytical expressions for for the derivatives, essentially, because when when you forward propagate through the black box, you only know uh, the activation, but you don't know its derivative analytically. So, is is that problem solved with this algorithm? Okay. Like uh, the, the problem that you don't have to know the derivatives analytically in or, in order to apply the algorithm. Okay, uh, whereas uh, over in this context, right, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this paper, uh, as I was reading, uh, uh, well, up to my understanding, I'm explaining it, uh, whether I, I don't know whether I'm answering your question or not, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So over here, the when we insert a black box uh, uh, into the forward post of your neural network, it means that the input data is passed through the black box before being processed by rest of the network. So, a uh, black box can be any kind of operation or function that transforms the input data in some way. And the exact details of this transformation are not known or understood. That makes the uh, it difficult to apply back propagation to train the neural network. So uh, that's why I mentioned that it requires knowledge of computation performed in the forward box. So uh, did I answer your question or? Uh... Mm, I think yes. Uh, uh, no, uh, I I do don't have a complete understanding of uh, uh, how this works. Uh, no, I think that that's that's what I meant. Like knowing the knowing the exact computations that you did, but this probably solves the problem. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, coming back to this slide, right? Um, back propagation is computationally expensive, uh, especially when we go for large networks containing many millions or billions of parameter, right? So uh, the use in resources constrained uh, environments. So it motivates us to develop some alternative learning algorithms. I hope uh, Hinton and his team is trying it from uh, 1980s and some period back. So again, uh, one alternative is uh, ever, uh, wherever I go in the literature, they mention about reinforcement learning. Uh, whereas uh, it is an alternative to back propagation, but it does not uh, require perfect knowledge of the uh, forward computation. That's the case. Um, over in this context, they mentioned that it suffers from high variance and scales poorly for uh, large networks containing many, uh, many variables. So uh, 
whereas uh, the author mentions that uh, forward forward algorithm is a promising alter uh, alternative but uh, it is in comparable speed with the back propagation but it can be used only uh, when the precise details of uh, forward computations are unknown it is also has an advantage of learning while pipelining sequential data through neural network without even storing the neural activities or stopping to propagate the error derivatives that's the uh, overall idea of uh, in this slide so coming back to uh, how forward forward algorithm um, works right so the forward forward algorithm replaces the forward and backward process of the back propagation by two forward process one is with a positive one and another one is negative process right uh, uh, whereas the positive process uses as yes, uh, uh, input real data and updates the weight with the aim of increasing a goodness function over here uh, the author mentions about uh, goodness function okay so uh, that function is over there in every hidden layer so the positive pass uses these input real data and updates the weights uh, with the aim of increasing a goodness and adjust the weights to decrease the goodness in every hidden layer so negative if negative data uh comes over uh, with the samples right that have been intentionally uh, we are manipulating over here right uh, seven is masked and it is inverted and uh, it is merged with six so we are intentionally making out uh, negative data that have uh, manipulated or generated in order to resemble the non existent futures right rather than labeling it wrongly here uh, we are making it to you know uh, resemble non existent futures or in the case of uh, Uh, we will be uh, in supervised learning right in later i'll be showing it we can have uh, label association as wrong future so the exclusive use of forward process uh, eludes all the problems of uh, back propagation that is a, a song comment that i'm making since uh, the weights are upgraded at each layer solving the update uh, locking problem it is possible to uh, uh, for us to massively paralyze the computation uh and substantially we can reduce the training time for example uh, at a time step right one uh, we can calculate based on the first sample the activations of first hidden layer and uh, updates its relative weights at uh, time step two we simultaneously update the weights on the second hidden layer based on the first sample and the weights of the first and the hidden layer and second sample so on it keeps updating so over here the goodness function that could be implemented uh, right but one uh, that uh, originally the author uh, adapted in the paper was uh, sum of squares of activities in the layer where the activation function is uh, relu in particular uh, the goal of learning is to push the goodness of the function to be above certain threshold for the real data and uh, if the threshold is uh, uh, below the negative data it has to be below for the negative data so uh, here uh, thus we will be able to formulate the probability of a layer to be positive by applying a sigmoid function to the sum of the goodness of the minus the threshold so over here uh, by applying a sigmoid function to the sum of uh, goodness of the function minus the threshold we will be able to formulate the probability uh, so in this case we will be therefore update the weights in order to increase this probability in every hidden layer for positive samples and we will be decreasing uh, the probability right uh, we will be having a decrease it for negative ones uh, to do that uh, what we will be doing is uh, we will be finding out the gradient right uh, so of the layer with respect to their relative weights then we will update the weights adding it to uh, them to such gradient for real data and we will be subtracting it from the negative data for example in a single layer network it is pretty obvious that this method converges to uh, some kind of optimal solution of the weights uh, if we consider multi layer architectures uh, the there is some problem there is an implementation in pytorch so the second whereas in this uh, multiple layer right the second hidden layer takes the input the activities of the first hidden layer and it could use the information contained uh in the length of activity vector and the first hidden layer to distinguish the positive and negative data so here um okay in general right uh, we'll be having a vector and length and the orientation right 
So they are passing only the orientation information within the networks. So uh, this is how they measure the positive and negative of uh, 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 goodness of the data, right? Uh, during the forward forward algorithm. Uh, any questions in this regard? So, over here, right, uh, the, as I mentioned in uh, last case, right, uh, in forward forward algorithm, we uh, replace forward and backward process of the back propagation by two forward passes, one with uh, positive and one with the negative one. The positive pass uses uh, input real data and updates the weights with the aim of increasing the goodness of the function in every hidden layer. Whereas the negative pass alternatively use the negative data. Uh, negative data over here is, uh, that is the masked and inverted data that uh, we are using. Uh, consists of samples that uh, have been intentionally manipulated and generated in order to resemble the uh, non-existent futures of like if I'm using someone it won't be having the future similar to six so uh, we'll be doing that so uh, in this case uh, it is used in this way so uh, over here right uh, the aim of Boltzmann machine learning is to uh, make a binary distribution uh, vectors on visible neurons so whereas when it comes to Boltzmann machine, sorry. So over here, right, uh, the equation that over here represents the uh, KL divergence between the data distribution and the model distribution with respect to the weights uh, in the Boltzmann machine network. In the left-hand side of the equation, it indicates that we are interested in measuring the change in KL divergence. As we change the weight in the network, the KL divergence acts as a measure of difference between the two probability distribution. In this case, uh, the P data, right? It represents the true data distribution, whereas P model represents the model distribution learned by the Boltzmann machine. So uh, the right side of the equation, right? It represents between two expected values of the products of two binary states, uh, SI and SJ, where I and J uh, represents the indices of two neurons in the network. Uh, the first term uh, represents the expected value of uh, SI and SJ under the data distribution. And the second term represents, again, the expected value under model distribution. So, the product represents over here the interaction or influence that happens within the neurons, I and J in the network. So here we take over the expected value is taken over all for all possible configurations of the binary states that happens within the uh, Boltzmann network. And the difference between the two expected values are uh, represented uh, to mention the disc discrepancy between the interactions and that happens between neurons in the data, also in the uh, model. So uh, in simple words, right, this equation tells us how a change in a single weight uh, WIJ uh, will affect the interaction between neurons in the network and how this will affect the KL divergence between the data and the model distribution. So this allows us to update the weights in the Boltzmann machine in order to better match the uh, data distribution. So uh, this is how uh, it mentions, right? So or in this paper, uh, the author mentions uh, contrastive learning from Boltzmann machine, right? Uh, again, it is an unsupervised learning where a model learns and differentiate between positive and ne uh, negative samples. So whereas in the context of Boltzmann machine, contrastive learning is used to learn the parameters of the model, where Boltzmann machines are uh, generative models, stochastic generative models, uh, which can be used to model uh, probability distribution over the binary variables within the uh, model. 
so uh, to learn any parameter of uh, of a boltzmann machine using contrastive learning uh, first the model we present the model with the positive example uh, which is a configuration of visible and the hidden units that occurs in the training data again we then generate a negative example by sampling from the model distribution Whereas in this case, the goal of learning algorithm is to adjust the weights of the model so that the positive examples have higher probability than that of the negative examples. So one way to do that is by make use of contrastive divergence algorithm, where we will be updating uh, weights of the model in the direction of the gradient, uh, right? Uh, uh, the positive example minus the log likelihood of the negative examples. So the whereas the negative examples are generated by running the model for uh, a fixed number of iterations by starting with the positive examples. So this process is continuously repeated for many positive examples and the weights are updated for after each iteration. So uh, by uh, using this idea, right, uh, they developed that the positiveness and uh, negativeness of the data. So far, am I good? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, over here, right, uh, this is an experiment. They, uh, they have many experiments within that paper, right? Uh, whereas I found this experiment as quite fascinating as it is a supervised experiment. Uh, so uh, here over here, uh, uh, we are going to take over an MNIST uh, uh, data, uh, an image with correct label, right? Uh, that constitute positive data, and an image with incorrect label constitutes the negative data. So the only difference that is uh, between these two data are uh, positive is the label, right? Uh, uh, over here, we we have the label, uh, whereas here intentionally we are giving the uh, wrong label. So the forward forward algorithm should ignore all image futures that do not correlate with the label, right? So first uh, we'll be uh, training the MNIST data set using forward forward algorithm. Uh, it is possible to classify a test digit running okay, with a particular label as an input and uh, it, accumulate, uh, it learns the goodness of, of all about uh, that data. But the first hidden layer, right? Uh, it learns all the goodness. So again, this has to be done for each label separately. So uh, if I'm going for this experiment, I have to go for the nine labels. After that, the label with the highest accumulated goodness will be chosen. So uh, over here in this paper, right? Uh, it reports that during training, in order to pick hard negative labels, we have to use a forward pass from the uh, neutral label, uh, so it was used within it. So with MNIST, after training all layers, right, to make a prediction of test image, uh, we found the uh, pair, right, X and Y, uh, where Y is the label. So Y will be having from zero to nine that will maximize our uh, overall activation that happens within the uh, network. So, uh, this is how they do the experiment. So uh, the author also mentions that uh, it's in uh, uh, works well with the uh, MNIST data set and some tie problems, but still it's in infancy stage. Uh, it has to grow. And uh, this is a condensed form of the paper uh, that uh, I, I made. So that's it. Uh, Yeah, are there any questions? Unfortunately, I had very bad connections, so I missed half of the talk, but I'm sure somebody has a question. Yeah, I have some questions, if I may. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, just starting from uh, this labeling, if we have, like when we have forward forward mechanism, uh, we definitely don't have uh, backward flow the information. So in case of supervised learning, how we pass information about label? Is Ooh. it well, like like we feed in this from like from the beginning? It comes from the 
input or there are uh, like another uh -huh. like mechanisms yeah okay uh, so the okay over in this case right uh, the particular label right uh, it acts as the input uh, so it comes from the beginning and your question is whether it comes and so it comes from the beginning so each each layer right uh, it acts as a separate entity and uh, goodness is learned over in each layer no information is passed back within the uh, network mm -hmm. so that's how it works so far yeah. i have other questions uh, but i will let others ask and then i will ask again yeah so uh, i actually want to comment on that because it uh, was also confusing but uh, so basically the label goes on the input layer right so i understood correctly yes yeah yes yeah. so, so then you have only forward pass and then the way you uh say whether the label um, um whether the label corresponds to the correct or incorrect um um image of of handwritten image of a handwritten uh digit you put it in the loss function itself and the loss function is now no longer uh defined on the output layer but defined for every neuron. Is this correct? So it's kind of in the bulk. Yeah. You need to define a loss function somehow anyways, right? So if you don't have, if you take all of those um, uh, labels and put them input layer, there is no more output layer, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, so then you somehow have to, uh, and, define uh loss function within the bulk and, and as, as i understand that there are two two loss functions one is positive one is negative so it seems that uh this means that there is an additional bit that, that kind of exists on this input uh, which which tells you which of the loss functions uh to use and then of course you don't need back propagation because the the reason you need back propagation is because uh you have uh, when you need it when you have uh, loss function defined on the output layer, and you still need to change weights in the bulk, in the, in the hidden uh, layers. And then you have to propagate uh, that function because that uh, the, the loss function is a function of the variables that are in the bulk. Now here, uh, the loss function is defined on the bulk, so you don't need to propagate um, for more than one step, although you can still do that, I, I, I imagine. Okay, anyways, uh, let's say uh, other questions. I I'm still trying to wrap my head around uh, what, what is being proposed and how it's different from the usual setup. Uh, other questions? And somehow, like somehow, uh, like building on your question, mm -hmm. uh, I got an idea we don't use exactly a loss function, some kind of goodness function, which is not exactly a loss function. So the like question why we use something else. I think it is loss function. I mean, you you call it whatever you want, right? You want to make goodness uh, better. So, so it is, it, it is the loss. Yeah. It is loss function. I mean, you In can still way. differentiate it with respect to all the variables. I mean, the, the only reason you do back propagation uh, is because you want to adjust variables uh in, in trainable variables in the bulk and the hidden variables now if imagine you have your neural network and you have loss function defined on all neurons not just on the output neurons then then of course you can just different differentiate that that function with respect to the local uh trainable variables weights or biases and there's no need for you to propagate it um uh, backwards no need but you can still do that um, I mean, what is the back propagation good for? You're trying to uh, make sure that you capture well the value of your, uh, the, the, how the loss function depends on all of the trainable variables. Now, you can do one step back of propagation, and that tells you something about how your uh, loss, uh, how your weight should be adjusted so that loss function becomes lower. Or you can take two steps and then it tells you uh, even more. So you have more of the um, you know, chain rule application. So uh, I, I, see, I, see, I see that you can only do one step uh, back propagation uh, and you can change the name of loss function on goodness function. Uh, but I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I mean, I don't expect this to perform better. And that's, I guess, what the author is saying. This isn't performing better than the, the old 
uh, algorithm, right? And looks like problem with this one pass because when we have like two passes, we uh, include information how later layer uh, behaves in connection like with the first. So we have- That's right. Or, like, okay, yeah, so I, let's have the simple but, problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm sorry, I'm keeping track of it. Simple problem. You have a uh, usual uh, feed forward neural network. You have 10 layers. Now you have a loss function defined on the output layer. And then you decide not to back propagate, and then you decide only train uh, weights on the on the you know on the output layer before the output layer. Now, will this network learn? Yeah, it will learn. You don't back propagate, but it will learn. It will certainly adjust. Loss yeah. function will go down. Will it be uh, you know the best possible learner? I doubt that. But okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Go ahead. Because it will learn some kind of local thing. Uh, like when we have like two paths, we make sure that uh, each layer learns considering uh, like learning of each another layer. In case of like uh, only forward propagation, next layer, yeah, it uses uh, all information and all learning of the previous layer, but previous layers doesn't know about what uh, like next layer uh, like knows and this is yeah uh, I, th I, th I think we can make it more general the statement that mm -hmm. you're making it, it doesn't depend on layers you can have uh unlayered structure uh now recurrent neural network and then uh, at some neuron you have some loss function defined okay now what can you do to make this loss function better you can differentiate this loss function with respect to uh trainable variables that connect to that neuron yeah okay well you will you will adjust them and, and loss function will go down or you can keep back propagating and then see how this loss function at one neuron uh whatever the loss you want to define or whatever you want to, whatever, whatever you want to call it um and the further back you go the more you um uh, improve uh the value of the loss function now how many steps backwards you have to take it's it's your choice with a layered network uh you know how many you need to take with unlayered, it's uh, you have to think harder uh, how how to do that. But seems that it seems like the suggestion here is don't go backwards. Just uh, you know do whatever smart forward path, and somehow this first step in the back propagation is most important. Maybe maybe you can adjust uh, your neural network structure such that only the one step backwards. Um, it's still back propagation, but it's still differentiating your goodness loss function with respect to the variable, but there's only one step. So maybe the statement here is that that one step may be most important. Uh, and that's probably usually true. Uh, yeah, because okay. mm -hmm. in context of this biologically plausible, like deep learning, uh, like mm -hmm. usual, usual argument, not about perfect knowledge of uh, like derivatives or whatever but like usually it's mm -hmm. that uh natural neural networks they are all one way so there is no way yeah. you, uh, like you can uh, send uh, like through the same network signal like backwards you can uh, do second right. uh, like network uh, like information goes there like using one path and uh, there is other network mm -hmm. going back but problem is this uh like parameters in in this neuron doesn't know about parameters there so even like information goes back it doesn't go back to the same one but if for example we add in like another like bridge layer uh, we can create more interesting architecture and this is probably something to experiment with we have one forward another forward and like third forward so we can actually update weights so we have full information full global uh, in like this forward uh, uh, neuron through uh, like through another uh, network, but again, this is just a general idea. We can work with this, and like another thing about like constant learning, like natural networks, they are spiking, so it's not like constant. We mm -hmm. need constant. This is like we have uh, like really specific time, uh, like firing, and we have uh, like a lot of time to. To process to regroup because uh, like you need to recharge your like uh, chemo uh, electrical stuff so like continuous learning mm -hmm. this is not the argument this is uh. 
Okay, um, other questions. Um, maybe somebody else wants to chip, chip in. And... Yeah, I just wanted to comment on the conversation about um, the forward pass. Uh, like in spiking networks, it's actually pretty common. Like there's many methods now where the, the connections or synapses uh, and neurons, they store local information as information gets you know, forward propagated. And then mm -hmm. that rep information represents uh, kind of the approximated derivative. So it is still approximating kind of- Yeah, but that's local. Uh, do. Yeah, it's purely yeah. local. That, that's that's, the that's what I'm that. saying. It's like, it's, it's equivalent to having a single backwards pass of the back propagation for suitably defined loss functions. So this is kind of, you, you never go to two, two steps. You define some local quantity and then you have some parameter that tells you how to optimize this proper uh, quantity. And so you call it the local loss function. And then basically the, the, you just see by how much that local property changes if you are to change weight. So there's still no back propagation there. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. There's no back propagation in those methods. Um, but I, I don't think they even do compute derivatives like for the one layer, as you were saying. Like so, they're not back propagating, but they're also not computing because the derivatives are essentially already there as stored as variables. Pro proxy, proxy for derivatives, yeah. of course, not derivatives. So something that resembles, you know, optimization. Yeah, you're right. Of course, yes. Uh, but but again, I mean, I think it, what is interesting question to ask is uh, if uh, we have some uh, neural network with uh, arbitrary architecture, you know, layered, non-layered, recursive, whatever. You do the forward pass. And now you're about to start the backward pass. And then the question is, uh, wh when is it that this on the, on the single step of a backward pass uh, gives you, you know, the, the biggest contribution to whatever uh, the overall um, derivative of the loss function with respect to the trainable variables would be. And so really, there, yes, you will get closer and closer. Uh, you, you will uh, be... Um, calculating your loss function, derivative of the loss function with respect to trainable variables better and better if you do more backward um, steps, but but they're not essential. Like, and the one, the first one is uh, most important. I think it should depend on both on network architecture and the type of uh, loss function. I know Nicola knows the answer to that question, or maybe he will know soon. Yes, Nicola? Not today. Not today, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll find out. So, uh, other questions, comments? All right, Tamil, uh, thank you for the presentation. Sorry I had to miss half of it because of the poor connection, but um, I'm sure it was great. Thanks a lot, guys. And uh, this is the only uh, talk that you have today. Um, the other person canceled. And so we will meet next time. Um, and next week, and then we'll have, as usual, two talks. See you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.